my parents loved to be a boy, Robert. Luckily, my mother's nurse name was Janine, because I feel Roberta Garofalo would be unwieldy. <laughs> <laughs> But my mom didn't know how to spell it, so that's why people get it wrong when they when they say it. How did you know that? I, I just found out, you know. Yeah, this surveillance society is nothing. <laughs> nothing. I mean, not that that's a, you know, state secrets or anything, but that's yeah. unusual. Well, that you, you know, know the whole that. culture of cruelty online. I can tell by the way you said that you've read that I've said that. <laughs> I've told a few things off it's the okay. internet. It's okay. <laughs> Well, there's a great deal of, of like material out there of you being interviewed, and you say a lot of stuff. Well, there's a lot. Really. There's a lot of stuff I say. And a lot of stuff people say I say. Somebody said if you don't, if you don't ever want to be criticized, don't say anything, don't do anything, because I, I it hurts me terribly when people criti criticize, uh, like anyone, uh, I, or at doing stand up when I get heckled, it hurts terribly, and I have no zingers or comebacks when I get heckled. I always just authentically say, you just hurt my feelings, why'd you say that? <laughs> and uh, it, it's incredibly disarming, so it actually works very, very much. But I would prefer to be well-liked by the most amount of people in any given situation. Oh, so, you are. Uh, well, uh, validation comes from... Uh, no, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> But validation does come from others. In order for it to be right, true? I feel like that... Yeah. And others, no. must, other, others must love you first, and then you too, perhaps, can love yourself. Well, change comes from within. Does it? I just heard that. I don't know if it's true. Well, I'm not surprised that like, people think they can just take cheap shots at you, because you're so, you have so much courage on stage that people would think like that you wouldn't be so... Sensitive or something. Well, I, I, Which is, I'm not saying that that, uh, that that there's any justification for for, for thinking it like no, that. No, no, you're giving me too much credit. I, it's, it's not their courage on stage, you know, starting stand up, and I, I didn't know you did, did stand up. And, well, that's, yeah. That's <laughs> <what I> mean. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to say. We worked together in Toronto in 1998 on a movie called Steal This Movie. Which she Wait. did. She did. She stole that movie. I, did, I didn't. You did. Uh, I did it, but thank you. Thank you. You, you were... played Jerry Rubin of the Chicago Eight. I played Scenario Jerry Rubin. was Abby Hoffman. I was Anita Hoffman. The real Anita Hoffman was on set. I was upset that Claire Fulani was not playing it because she felt I was too heavy. But that, I'm not, I mean, that it's not sticking with me. It doesn't stick with me. That she said that. <laughs> Uh, when we were doing wardrobe, and she was saying, it's disappointing, I wanted Claire Forlani, because uh, you're, you're a little heavy. And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, Claire Forlani isn't doing the part I am, so I need bigger bell bottoms. <laughs> So you know, we came to the set, and I had a similar moment. Tom Hayden. Moment. Tom Hayden came on the set, and then he was like, uh, someone said, yeah, this guy's playing Jerry Rubin. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought you did great. And uh, Troy Hayden, his son, played Tom Hayden in right. the movie. Henry Fonda's grandson. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Acting yeah. family. It is an acting family. Like the Barrymores. Like us. Like, like, like uh, uh, Actually, I'm the only person, although my uncle was a teamster. Your father's from the Bronx. My father and mom yeah. are both from the Bronx, yes. I'm from the Bronx. That's right. He's from Long Island. Well, Brooklyn, I'm from, but right, my I'm from New Jersey. And you're from New Jersey. <laughs> the tri-state area is well represented. Tri-state, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my parents met in Bowling Alley in the Bronx right. in uh, 1956. It doesn't get more uts than that. Uts. I feel like uts. You know, he had lived there in the, in the 40s and, and 50s and gone to Cardinal Hayes High School. He lived in the Italian neighborhood and my mom was in the Irish. They were like blocks from each other and never met each other, but then they met at the bowling alley, went to a CYO dance. That's why there's so many Italian-Irish hybrids, because of Catholicism. Very popular. Yes. Very popular in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. Marty went to Cardinal Hayes. Oh, really? What, yeah. uh, what years? Scorsese, I mean. Oh, oh, Mark. But he went to Cardinal Hayes High School. He didn't even know he wanted to be a filmmaker at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I was working on Catholicism. I'll, I'll make this right, you were in the wheelchair, and Ben Stiller auditioned, and I was mad that you I got know, that. I know, hey, hey, here's a story. I went to audition for that tower heist, and uh, uh, the, director, the director of the movie, uh, Brett Ratner, he, he, he brought me into the room, and he said, like, uh, hey, hey, look, hey, uh, Ben, this is Kevin, hey, 
he was really jealous of you because you got that part in Goodfellas. Right. Right, Ben? And he was, you know... It's like the first thing he said when he found out we were doing the Abby Hoffman movie. This is years after. He just yeah. said uh, he got that part of, of, of the, the brother of the wheelchair. I'm sure he doesn't begrudge you anything. It's just one of those things. Like, who wouldn't want to work with Martin Scorsese? It's, and a lot of times... Have, uh, I'm sure this hasn't happened to you guys, but uh, two things happened to me a lot in, in the last 12 years. One, why did you quit acting? Which hurts me. You know, wow. I, I didn't. But, but I, I can understand, fair enough, why you would think it. And then every once in a while, uh, people say, you should be in a Scorsese film. <laughs> wow, you think? That would be... I had not thought of that. Is it up to me? I... I uh, Positive attitude. Positive attitude. But it's one of those things where, or, or yeah, when people, uh, and there's a very nice guy who at, at my corner deli, and he says, um, "You should go to Hollywood." I'm not going to do his accent. He said, "You should go to Hollywood. They make lots of movies there." <laughs> <laughs> and then I always have to pretend like, oh, yeah, I kind of love New York, but, yeah, maybe that's what I need to do is go to Hollywood and not be a middle-aged lady. <laughs> okay, let, let me ask you something. How did you fuck? Now, you also said your parents told you when you were a kid that you were great. You're great. Oh, oh, okay. That has to do with the narcissism of stand-up comedy. But, but, my, but I, I have the decency to hate myself. Anyone who knows me knows that. So it's yes, there's narcissism, but I really have a lot of self-loathing. So don't be alienated by the narcissism. But my, I think part of it, besides loving comedy, is my mom and dad. To all of us kids, they were so. They honestly were like, you're the. We love you so much. You know what I mean? Like, I say this with nothing but gratitude, but you learn the hard way. That is not how others feel. <laughs> and I feel like part of the reason I got into Santa, besides loving Santa, is seeking, honestly, because I've tried to think about it. Like, I think I'm always really seeking those two unconditional, um, from my formative years, of, of two people always saying, you, you're and you're so funny. You, they they would just for all of us kids. Uh, they they just would act like we were very funny and charming. And they also uh, lowered the bar for me academically so much. I I, mean, I, I I was a straight C student. I'm talking about gentlemen C's. Like everything. And I was like, oh, you got a C. And Steve, I feel you have, have been quiet. <laughs> You've been smiling. Yeah. Oh no, that's okay. <laughs> Do you remember, I actually have a Steve Buscemi story, too, that you may remember. Well, we're on Pete and Pete. Oh. 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 And then on SNL, it was a Pulp Fiction Grease hybrid yes. parody. Which <laughs> also was hosting, and Seal was in it. And a wig, and a San, Sandra Day wig. And, uh, but, Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers audition. Oh, my God. Oh. Um, and... I had been waiting three hours. Yeah. You had flown in from Holland and had That's been waiting right. a couple hours. I didn't want to go. I didn't either. <laughs> no. But but it's almost that way. You have to it was do at it. the time when that Oliver Stone was in this like the mafia. It's like Oliver Stone wants to see you. And I said, <laughs> I'm in Holland with my wife and my son, and, and I, you know, you know, you have to come back. <laughs> and I bought into it. Yeah. So I get there. Janine is there, and we're sitting and we're talking, and then she gets called in. So I figure I had a few minutes to, you know, and I swear to God, it seemed like less than 30 seconds and you came back out. <laughs> I looked at you and I went, what happened? And you were just like, <laughs> past me. And I was like, oh my God, what the hell was going on? <laughs> so what happened? Okay. <laughs> so after three hours, after three hours waiting, and, and don't misunderstand me, it's not, it's not the wrong, I mean, he, uh, Salvador is one of my favorite movies, and actually Goodfellas, I sat through twice in Crimes and Misdemeanors, Woody Allen, I find that to be too perfect films, but in the theater after Goodfellas, which... Can you imagine Matt Stiller playing my part? <laughs> no, I cannot. You, I, it's, a, it's, un, it's like, what? Friends. Matt Perry, not Chandler? <laughs> you, you, not the literature. Actually, it's one of those where you can't imagine anyone else playing the, the parts of it. I thought you were great. I, I want to know what happened with Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone, yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> 